Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Learn from the Greeks. Today, I'm here with my friend, Tony. Tony, say hi. Hey, guys. So, of course, as you can imagine, this is the first take that we take. We don't do second takes here. It's one take, straight take. Tony is laughing right now because he knows that probably this is the second take. <laughs> Uh, Tony is going to talk uh, to us about something super interesting that is a huge market here in the United States about esports. Tony, tell me a little bit about what esports is, how big is the market, but first of all, how did you end up here in the United States? Mm, okay, thank you, John. Nice to be here. Great to talk with you, my great friend, and uh, it's lovely to see what you're doing for the Greek entrepreneurial community in Greece and all across the world. It's really awesome stuff. So it's a pleasure and honor to be here. Um, okay, so I'm Tony. I'm from Athens, Greece. I've been here in Los Angeles for the last four and a half years. Um, my original professional background is from the hospitality industry, but for the past four and a half years, I've been an esports consultant and currently working in a, in a tech startup involved in the live streaming uh, within esports and gaming. Uh, now, how my journey started. Way back uh, in my late young adulthood, let's say, like 18 years old or so, uh, having been a gamer for many, many years, uh, I got introduced to the concept of Indian cafes, which was exploding in Greece, and started visiting with a lot of friends of mine. And it became, you know, a continuous daily hobby for us. Uh, it was a great experience that uh, introduced me to the world of online gaming uh, and the competitive uh, the competitive element of online gaming being able to play against other people online whether you know them whether they're your friends right next to you or people from other countries was just something intriguing to me uh, i've had a competitive edge since i know myself because i was also a professional track and field athlete throughout my young years um, and so naturally, it's something that I really dug deep into and focused on honing my skills and really doing it at the best possible level. And together with a few friends of mine, we really created a team and uh, entered what we call today esports. Back then, it was just like play online against other people in structured tournaments and leagues uh, that can lead you to some big live events. We had the fortune of being pretty good at the games that we played. Mainly, it was Call of Duty and Medal of Honor. Uh, and, you know, we went to some international tournaments. We grew the scene in Greece for Call of Duty by organizing a lot of events around different internet cafes in the country. And uh, we, we were uh, administrators of the Greek Call of Duty forum community for years. It may still be there, actually. I'm not sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, that led me to continuously be involved with competitive gaming from its inception, let's say, back in the beginning of 2000. Um, that said, at some point, uh, and after a few years of doing Call of Duty and a few other games at a top level, uh, I had to focus on my professional career because the industry wasn't at a point that you can monetize and make a living out of back then. Uh, I also met my wife and I had to focus on my relationship and everything as well. And so that was the end for a few years. I was always in touch with what's happening though. So in 2015, I quit, same as my wife did, and moved to the United States to pursue what we're really passionate about as a career. And passion is a key. Passion is the key word there uh, because that's what drove us in our entire efforts because we literally landed here with zero plan zero work, zero connections, and no seemingly easy way to get an in to the industry we're trying to get into. And so we were starting essentially from zero. Uh, and we were doing that, me at least, at the age of 30. So restarting in an entirely new industry from the age of 30. So that should be inspiring for people that are passionate about esports, gaming, or any industry really that there's no age limit to when you decide to pursue your dreams. All you need is grit, determination, and hard work, and hustling. And no matter how many no's and rejections you get, eventually you'll get there. Just be persistent. That's all. 
No, oh, fantastic. And what happened after that? So you came to the United States. What happened? What happened? <laughs> What a journey. Uh, you know, in the beginning, I had no clue. How do, how, how do I get into esports? You know, I really don't know anyone right now in the industry. And it was now in 2015, 2016, it was actually developed. You know, it was starting to really pick up. And I'm just a nobody from Greece, essentially, at that point. I don't know. I literally, I started driving over. I started using uh, materials to promote the fact that I'm trying to get into the industry in Uber. Like, I don't know, putting hats with logos from games in my car or stickers or anything so that I can have conversation openers with people that I would pick up in case they were from the industry. Uh, it actually worked. I met a lot of people from the industry. I connected with people that decided to give me opportunities and hire me for my knowledge and experience in the space as a consultant. And that was, the, that was the start, essentially. Through that and through a few projects like that, I was able to then get introduced to a lot more people in the industry, through them to a lot more. And that's kind of like, you know, a butterfly effect. Like one thing leads to another. And a chain reaction that I meet one, from them I meet another five, from them five I meet more and more and more. And eventually I, it led me to a point that I now know enough people in the industry to get to who to who and to whatever I want to get whenever needed. And I really appreciate the, my connection with all of them and try to give them value first of all, before trying to extract any value out of our relationship. Uh, my latest venture is currently being part of a new startup from Israel that are developing a great solution uh, revolving around monetizing live streams uh, as a team, uh, utilizing all, your entire roster of creators. Uh, and uh, also showing brands a, a new, fully customizable and authentic way of integrating it into the world of esports and gaming through live streaming and other avenues, together with some traditional models that allow them to do it in a way that they're somewhat familiar with. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're working on. We're really pushing to go to, to market with a lot of esports teams and brands as we speak. And it's going really great. I'm really happy and I'm working my butt off to, <laughs> together with the rest of the team. But things are going great. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And what do you think that um, kids and then parents should do that they really like the esports idea? Meaning that uh, I'm sure that a lot of kids fantasize like, hey, I'm really good at Call of Duty. Maybe I would become a professional, make tons of money. What, what do you think about it? Is it realistic? It depends if you live in the United States. What's your take on that? I think kids tend to not be realistic with what, what they can and cannot achieve. They tend to dream, and dreaming is good. But at some point, you need to take a dream, decipher it, and convert it into facts. And then those facts see, like, am I that good? compared to other people that I play against? Am I just average, et cetera? Even so, even if you see that you're great, you need to realize and parents should help their kids realize that you can be great, but there's still a very slim chance that you'll reach the, the top that can actually allow you to make a continuous living out of it. Uh, however, that said, there's an important thing that's very often overseen, uh, overlooked, sorry. Uh, by parents, by kids, and by professionals of my industry that don't mention it, that esports is not about a kid just getting in and becoming a pro gamer. It can also be about any other uh, position, role, job, uh, anything surrounding that industry. Just like what I do, I'm not a pro gamer anymore, but I'm doing something that I'm equally passionate about as if I was a pro gamer, and it allows me to make a living and give value to the industry at the same time. There's tons of opportunities in the industry of esports and tons more keep on appearing every day and uh, trust me you viewers when i say that okay yes you want to be a pro gamer and everything we, we all want to be like uh, pros in what we love as a passion but there's tons of things around it that you would be equally as excited to be part of like working for a game publisher of the game you love or working for a tournament organizer of the events that you visit and are super passionate about and crazy to attend or working with a startup that's creating a crazy new solution that's integrated into a game, around a game, around an event, around being a pro gamer, tons of stuff. 
and I can keep on going with opportunities out there that would be great for you to pursue if becoming a pro gamer is not really feasible or reasonable to expect. Mm -hmm. And I would start, last thing is, I would start by that notion that I expect I'm not probably going to be able to be a pro gamer. So let's keep in mind what other things I can hold my skills towards to be ready. So if I try to be a pro gamer, hopefully with the support from my close circle, my family, uh, if I try it, I have a pivot. I have a plan B immediately to pivot to. That's equally as exciting. You know, that's, that's my suggestion and take on it. Let's say that I'm, uh, this is true story, that I'm very, a very good player at Super Mario. Okay, like I'm a great player at Super Mario. What are the steps that I need to take in order to become a pro player? Are there actually specific steps I could do or like there is no handbook? Switch games. Super Mario is not a game that you can really become a pro. <laughs> I no, mean, there's... there's no, there's, you can't. Yeah, there's speed racing for Super Mario. That's the only thing you can compete on. But yeah, don't expect much out of it. Okay, no, no jokes around. Um, so there are steps for you to, to make an effort uh, the structures are slowly becoming more clear. Like there, there's, uh, at least here in the United States, there's high school leagues being developed and there's collegiate leagues being developed and then there's the pro leagues and tournaments. So that's a, a clear path for a kid to say like, okay, I'll participate in that stuff in high school and then I'll go to college and then pro league and hopefully it's going to work. Uh, or you can see if it doesn't. Uh, obviously, in some regions like uh, Greece, namely, or some other European regions, there's no such structures, so it's a bit harder. But uh, usually, you utilize the in-game ranked mode systems and ladders and pointing and everything to measure yourself against competition and understand how good you are. Now, how you get from being average or bad at a game to trying to become the best, time, a lot of time a lot of practice, a lot of studying other people's skill set and play style, because unlike in other sports, you can actually try and replicate stuff that you see, which is why esports is so popular, because you can go and watch someone play and you can go back home and try to do the same thing, and it's possible. Uh, and then, you know, at some point, you, you will understand that you're reaching your... Not your cap, your entire cap, but your cap for that certain moment. And you understand where you're at. And uh, it, it gives you a pretty good understanding of where you can get with uh, some more hard work. Uh, when you're serious about it, you, you can tell. You can tell if you've got what it takes. Okay, so I will have to put aside my dreams of becoming a Super Mario yeah. Okay, it makes sense. I would, I would suggest so. <laughs> I'll, try to I'll try to switch to something more aggressive, more violent uh, game. Perfect. Uh, thanks a lot, Tony. That was like super informative for, for you guys that are watching right now. Leave a lot of comments in the description, like right below, like there on the video. And ask any questions you want. Uh, uh, Tony, Tony will be here on LinkedIn for a long time, so ask him whatever you want, he will respond to your thousands of requests. And see you soon, see you next time. Thank you, Tony, for helping us learn from the Greeks. It was a pleasure, have a good one, guys. You too, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.